good morning everybody so today we continue our study topic functions as well as their different modifications so in today's class we will continue the rest of the suit system their morphologies their functions and the modifications of different plant parts so starting with leaf so leaf is a dorsoventrally compressed uh, lateral appendage which is produced from the stem particularly from the nodes and it's particularly specialized for doing photosynthesis so that is the green part of the plant now the leaf or the portion of the leaf that portion is called leaf base if you see this portion this is the main stem and in this part the leaf is attached with the stem so this part is called uh, leaf base and often when the leaves discarded from the plants we found some kinds of scars some kinds of circular to oval shaped uh, slightly depression scar marks those are formed due to detachment of leaves from the stem now leaves of some plants they possesses a pair of lateral outgrowths at the base on either side of the axillary bud these are often uh, green in color in their early stage and their function is to protect the uh, axillary bud these are called stipules you can see this portion these stipules in the juvenile part or in their early growth stage they are green in color and they protect the axillary bud but later uh, when they are grown uh, old these stipules become uh, colorless or often slightly brownish in color uh, so these are called stipules and the leaves which have these stipules they are called stipulate leaves whereas those leaves which did not have stipules those are called extipulate leaves now another important part of leaf petiole is the part of the leaf connecting the lamina or blade with the branch of the system this is uh, mainly a uh, juicy cylindrical tube like structure but often it may be hollow or tubular in shape this portion is called petiole the function of petiole is to raise the leaf lamina so that it can get better sunlight and uh, better air flow and that will be helpful or that will be needed for the green leaf lamina for photosynthesis now some leaves they bear the petiole petiole and through this petiole they connected with the stem so those leaves which have petiole are called petiolate leaves and there are some plants in which the leaf lamella directly emerges from the nodes there is no petiole so in that case those leaves are called non petiolate or sessile leaves the last and the most important part of leaf is called the leaf blade or lamina this is the most flattened and green part of the leaf and then in this part mainly the photosynthesis process or any kind of uh, gaseous exchange and transpiration is done so if you look at this picture this portion is the leaf lamina which may or may not be connected with the stem by a petiole this is a more or less a juicy cylindrical tube 
or it may be hollow uh, such that what we observe in the trees of papaya in papaya trees the petiole is hollow there is in the axils we found the axillary bars and these axillary bars are uh, sometimes covered with a protection cover uh, which is known as stipule uh, now the leaves may have stipule or may not have and this entire leaf where connected with the main stem that is called leaf base so basically what we mean to say by the term leaf that includes the leaf base the petiole petiole a leaf may have or may not and the leaf lamina now coming to the different shape blade depending on the shape they are named differently some are elliptical like this one some are obovate to some are ovate some are lensipede which are called lanceolate some are reniform uh, this one is chordate some are rhombic in shape called rhomboid to acicular some are sagittate and some are linear some are uh, perfoliate conate and perfoliate so depending on the different shape you can shape the uh, you can see the different shape of the leaf lamina and depending on the shape different uh, shape names of leaf lamina are given now an important modification is found in many plant leaves and this modification is particularly found for the plants which grows in the tropical rainforest where there is a huge amount of rainfall occurs now when the rainfall occurs this rain uh, moist all the parts of the plant now although land plants although in land plants the uh, leaf blade or leaf lamina is covered with a waxy coating which is called cuticle uh, which protects them from dehydration and whenever a water drop falls over this leaf lamina due to this waxy coating the water drops uh, readily uh, rolled over the leaf lamina they are not readily stored or remained on the leaf lamina but often it is found that in an area where there is huge rainfall some amount of water or some amount of rainfalls in the form of water droplets remained attached within the leaf lamina such that in this picture also you can see the two droplets of uh, water they got stuck in the leaf lamina now if this happens the water droplets stuck on the leaf lamina then these become the places where numerous fungi or epiphytes or bacteria grows and virtually with time these epiphytes and fungi they destroy the leaf lamina so basically the presence of this water droplets on the leaf lamina causes the destruction or damage of leaf lamina so to prevent this kinds of uh, storage or these kinds of attachment of water droplets in the leaf lamina the tropical rainforest leaves they modified their apical part into a slightly inserted portion like a small finger in the apical part this is the most distal part from the uh, stem so in this part in the apical part you can see a small pointed projection appears from the leaf lamina and this basically functioned as a drainage system by which the stagnant water in the leaf lamina can be easily drained out through the apical part so that there will be no attachment or no storage of water droplets on the leaf lamina so by this simple modification the leaf lamina protects itself from the fungi and epiphytes which grows in the 
stored or attached droplets above the leaf lamina and this feature particularly observed to those plants to those leaves which suffer a huge amount of precipitation a huge amount of rainfall almost throughout the year and this feature this pointed tongue like projection in the apical part of the leaf lamina is known as drip tip Now coming to the venation, that is the arrangement of veins are basically some uh, tubular structures or tubular uh, tissues by which the nutrients, that means the raw minerals, water, and foods are supplied or transferred at different parts within the leaf lamina. These are called veins, and these veins they have of different um, degree of uh, thick and different uh, order now the main two types of venation are observed in leaf lamina the first type is called reticulate venation in which we found that the veins are repeatedly farcating to forming a net or mesh like structure such that in this case so this is called reticulate venation it looks like a net of veins the other form of venation is known as parallel venation where the veins of different order they are arranged in parallel to each other such that in this case you can see the all the veins of different order they are arranged parallel to each other these kinds of venation is known as parallel venation now both these venation types reticulate and parallel venation they are again divided into two types the first one is unicostate where we can see a single mid vein in that this case this is the single mid vein and from this single mid vein the lateral veins and the secondary veins emerge and the finer one often called venlets but the main feature is here only a single mid vein occur in the leaf lamina and from that different uh, secondary and tertiary order veins emerge and the second type is multicostate where instead of one mid vein there we found two or more prominent mid vein so instead of this one you may see another mid vein here mid rib uh, which is as much as he can robust like this one another one like this so instead of a single mid vein in multicostate we get two or more prominent mid veins but both in these two type the ultimate resulted pattern would be reticulate so this one is reticulate unicostate this one should be reticulate multicostate similarly for parallel venation also they may be unicostate such that we found in the banana trees a single mid vein and from that um, different secondary veins emerge and the other type that is the parallel multicostate where instead of a single mid rib instead of a single mid vein we get multiple mid ribs arranged in a parallel fashion this is called parallel multicostate venation now continuing we are coming to the morphology of leaf so the leaves may be of two types the first one in which there is a single leaf blade or leaf lamina present and that is uh, attached with the stem with the help of petiole or the leaf lamina directly attached with the stem so in this case there is a single leaf lamina this leaf, this leaf lamina the margin may be entirely smooth or the margin may be jagged such that uh, in this case so there was there may be some insertion in, along the margins of the leaf lamina but keep in mind in simple leaf this insertion this indentation of the leaf margin never meets with the midrib 
so there may be uh, insertion but these insertion never meet with the midrib and that makes it it is a single leaf lamina with these kinds of jagged margin but in case of compound leaves this insertion reach with up to the midrib and that makes the entire leaf lamina divided into numerous smaller parts such that in this picture what i drawing as the insertion reaches the midribs it said it separated the entire leaf lamina into numerous smaller portions these smaller portions are called leaflets or pinny now the question comes by simply observing a leaf such that in this case in this picture say for example how did we identify whether it is a simple leaf or a compound leaf the main distinction character by which we can easily demarcate a simple leaf and a compound leaf is the presence of axillary buds in case of simple leaves the axils that is the position where the uh, leaves joined with the stem in those axils that bears the axillary bud but if it is a leaflet then these angular portions these leaflets never bear any kind of bud so simply by observing the axillary bud whether we found any kinds of axillary bud or not that will helps us to identify whether it is a simple leaf or a compound leaf now compound leaf, the first type of compound leaf is known as pinnately compound leaf in pinnately compound leaves the leaflets are present laterally on a common axis and the leaflet occurs in both sides of this axis now this axis is known as rachis basically this axis was the mid rib or equivalent to mid rib for a simple leaf so in this case you can see in this picture this one is the mid rib or this one is called rachis and on either side of this mid rib or either side of this rachis uh, you can find the leaflets so if you join this leaflets apical part with a smooth line you can imagine about the original simple leaf scenario although it is not a simple leaf because the insertions reached up to the mid rib and for compound leaf particularly for pinnately compound rib this mid rib or this uh, mid vein is known as rachis so in case of pinnately compound leaf we never use the term mid rib instead we use the term rachis now pinnately compound leaves are of three types the first one is unipinnate where you can see the leaflets arranged on both sides of the rachis and there is a single leaflet unpaired leaflet occurs at the apical part of the rachis so that makes its uneven in number in the second type is known as bipinnate where you can see from the rachis secondary uh, veins emerge and from these secondary veins the leaflets arranged in a paired way on both sides and they are even always even in number you can see always even in number there is no single uh, leaflet and the last type that is called tripinnate again from the rachis the secondary vein emerges and from these secondary veins the leaflets occur in three in number so that is why it is known as tripinnate the second type of picture is called palmately compound leaf now in palmately compound leaf all the leaflets are arranged 
in the apical part of the uh, mid vein or here we called in the apical part of the petiole and the leaflets arranged from the same point in a hold fashion here you can see this one is the petiole and all the leaflets arranged from this tip of the petiole in a hold fashion surrounding the tip so in case of palmately compound re leaves they did not have any rachis because each palmate branches or each leaflet in palmately compound leaves they emerge directly from the petiole now coming to the modifications of leaves so leaves are not always what we generally hard up to this that these are the most flattened from that often we found some leaves which are modified particularly the xerophytic plants which are found in an arid regions there we found that the leaves gets modified to reduce the rate of evapotranspiration loss of water because in arid region the plants suffer scarcity of water now if a plant in an arid region where there is a scarcity of water has huge or high aerial coverage of uh, leaves or leaf lamina then there will be a huge loss of water through evapotranspiration so to reduce this loss of water the leaves of those plants are modified in a sharp uh, small stiff pointed structure which we call as spines now as the leaves are modified into these kinds of spines such that we found in the uh, zz5 fast trees or particularly the xerophytic plants the stems gets modified into a little flattened portion and in this case the stem becomes green that is the stem becomes uh, chlorophyll rich and stem make photosynthesis but apart from these xerophytic plants there are some plants in which the leaf margins or the stipules they get modified into spines such that the common or very known example to us is the aloe vera plants here you can see the margin is becomes smaller spiny now these spines are not due to the restriction of evapotranspiration loss of water rather the modification of these leaf margins or modifications of stipules into spines they protect the plants from the grazing animals so because of this presence of spines the grazing animals did not take them as food apart from the modification into spines there are some leaves in which the leaf lamina is modified into a curly cylindrical spring like structure these are called tendrils and these kinds of modifications of leaves particularly happen in those plants which have a weak stem so they are not able to stand tall so for support of the plant the leaves gets modified and forms these kinds of spring like structure which holds a solid structure and by support of that structure the plants will uh, rise or climb up through a um, solid structure these spring like structure are called leaf tendrils leaf tendrils now here i will um, giving you the example that these tendrils which is found in pumpkin uh, trees in passion uh, plant, fruit plants tendrils are formed from the modification of leaves but the tendrils can be formed by modifications of stem also 
so tendrils may formed both from the modifications of leaves and the modifications of stems also so in when the tendrils form by the modification of stems we call them as stem tendrils and but the function of tendrils is remain same that is to support the plant to climb up the uh, climb up any structure and in that cases the stem is generally weak or not rigid enough to stand tall in a stand tall the uh, plant uh, entire plant so that the leaf lamina can get uh, ample amount of light and uh, atmosphere that is atmospheric carbon dioxide for photosynthesis now coming to the flower that is the reproductive part of a plant a flower is divided basically into uh, four segments the most basal mode has sepal that is the green colored part uh, and the function of sepal is to protect the entire flower in its early stage that is in its uh, juvenile condition before the flower um, grows before the flower actually uh, forms or takes uh, its uh, shape in the budding stage the sepals protects the other parts of the flower from any kinds of external phenomena the next part is the most attractive and most colorful portion of the flower that is known as petal and the petals become so much colorful that it attracts the insects or other organ uh, organisms so that uh, it helps in uh, fertilization processes now if we look at the details of parts of flower as i already mentioned the basal most part or the green part is known as sepal which protects rest of the parts of the flower in its early stage petals attract insect, uh, insects by its color full variations by different colors the reproduct main reproductive part of a flower is known as stamen this is the uh, male reproductive part and these stamens make pollen whereas the female reproductive organ in a flower is known as the carpels and at the basal part of each carpel there is a ovary and this ovary when fertilization completes that is when uh, pollens are stuck in the insects uh, foods or insects wings and transferred to the carpels that is the female reproductive organ then fertilization occurs and after fertilization the basal part of carpel that is the ovary uh, becomes larger in size and it makes food, uh, fruits and we know that the fruits contain the seeds so fruit is fruit is the seed bearing structures particularly for the flowering plants or angiosperms and which form from the ovary of the uh, female reproductive organ if we look at the structure of a fruit the fruit consists of two different structures the outermost portion is known as pericarp and the innermost part is known as seed so pericarp is basically protecting the seed now the pericarp is the ovary wall which surrounds the seed or it is often known as seed container and the pericarp has three regions the outermost part or the skin of the fruit is known as the exoscarp or epicarp the middle part which is the most fleshy or juicy portion that is known as the mesocarp and the innermost part which encloses the seed is known as endocarp now there are three types of fruits found in simple fruit uh, a simple fruit develops from a single carpel a single carpel makes the a single fruit 
second type is known as aggregate fruit uh, it develops from many separate carpels of one single flower and these separate carpels they are fused with one uh, another but they are restricted within a single flower and the last type is known as composite or multiple fruits here the fruit develops from many carpels of many flowers and that is known as uh, or that type of fruit known as composite fruit uh, or multiple fruits the examples of these kinds of fruits uh, the simple fruit is pea fruit the uh, example of aggregate fruit is strawberry and the example of composite or multiple fruit is pineapple Now, what are spores and pollen? Both spore and pollen are the reproductive products cells. The fungi, mosses, liverworts, hornworts, and seedless vascular plants, they produce spores. But only seed-bearing plants, they produce pollen. Often microscopic in size, these spore and pollens both, and they are durable, so they did not destroy easily because of their finer size and they are easily transported in atmosphere or in wind movement so the pore and uh, this pollen and spores can be found in many different environments and the first known fossil occurrence of spore and pollens is from the devonian time and we are already aware that the fast land plants appeared uh, at the end of the silurian or very early in the devonian time so immediately after the appearance of land plants uh, in the rock records also we get spore and pollens that is the reproductive microscopic part of a uh, plant and here is a picture microscopic picture of spore and pollens these are very tiny in size uh, these scale bars are of in micrometer range so except micro high resolution microscope uh, one is not able to observe them and it is impossible to observe them in naked eye now if we look at the cross evolution of plants the first fossil record of land plants was found in the end of the silurian or often it is told that it is found in the early devonian time of the paleozoic era the angiosperms that is the flower bearing plants they evolved during the jurassic and early cretaceous time and soon after that birds and mammals appears in a huge number in a vast number in the earth scenario so the plant evolution basically forces or supports the evolution of animal groups now if we look at the classification of plant kingdom the entire plant groups can be divided first into two groups the first group that is the non flowering and non seed bearing that is these plants does not have any flower or does not have any seed these are known as cryptogamy and the second group which have flower and seed they are known as phanerogamy the cryptogamy plants can be again subdivided into three groups the thallophyta in this case the plant body cannot be differentiated into root stem or leaf so there is no proper plant like structure there is no proper root proper stem or leaf the examples are algae, fungi, and lichens. So, in algae, fungi, or lichens, there is no uh, root or there is no proper stem or leaf. The second group of cryptogamy is known as bryophyta. Here, false roots and leaves are found, spores are produced in a capsule. The third group of cryptogamy is known as pteridophyta, where true roots and leaves are found but seeds are still absent in 
the phanerogamy part or phanerogamy plants they are divided into two groups the gymnosperm here flower and um, seeds are present but seeds in gymnosperms are naked because that is the seeds does not have any protection cover does not have any epicarp and the other group is known as angiosperm where seeds occur in a epicarp that is seeds occur in a fruit angiosperms can be again divided into two groups the monocot means one seeded leaf and the dicot means two seeded leaf so this is a this is a broad or general classification of the plant kingdom which is more or less followed uh, all over the world so that's all about the plant morphology thank you